friends, it's Maggie, and welcome to another Maggie Reads Live. The schools are closed in many places, and everyone practicing social distancing by continuing their schoolwork remotely from home for a little bit. My dad thought this would be a great time for us to spend a little more time with you and do daily live streams of books. Okay, I'm in my blue comfy chair, and today we're reading Follow the Moon Home, a tale of one idea, 20 kids and 100 sea turtles, by Philip Castell and Deborah Hopkinson. I always need help finding my way, especially in a new place. Before, before long, you'll feel right at home, Viv. I wasn't so sure. Welcome, Vivian, called Mr. J. You're just in time for the fun. We're looking for a problem to solve. I got out my pencil and bit my lip. I rode my bike all over town, looking for a problem. Mostly I just got lost. On Saturday, I took Samson and Luna for a run on the beach. Mostly they pulled me. Let's make a gigantic hole, I guess, plopping down. My big digger and my little digger sprang into action. Suddenly, it was raining sand. Looks like fun, but be sure to fill in that hole, a man said walking by. It's nesting season. I smoothed out the sand and we all went to look. What do holes have to do with turtles? It's because of the babies, said a voice. I rolled to see a girl from school. I'm Clementine, she reminded me. Baby sea turtles need a clear path to get to the sea. Holes in sand castles get in their way. I didn't know we had sea turtles here. Samson pulled on the leash. We do. Oh, and look what happened to this baby, cried Clementine. Why were you going the wrong way, little one? Mr. J had told us to use our own eyes so that so that night, Mom and I went back to the beach. As darkness fell, we could see bright lights winking on, one by one, along the shore. That's it, I said. The lights in the beach houses are the problem. Why is that, Mom asked. When baby sea turtles hatch, they follow the, strong, they follow the strongest light they see, I explained. So if they head away from the sea, they get dehydrated and die. My heart sank as I stared at the houses. There are so many. How can we ask all these people to turn off their lights? Most of these houses are vacation rentals, Mom said. That means new people come to stay every few days. We'd have to knock on doors every night. Clearly, I needed help to solve this problem, and I knew just how to get it. On Monday morning, Clementine and I raised our hands first. We told our class what we learned and observed about loggerhead sea turtles. The sea turtle eggs are starting to hatch. I went, I went on to save the hatchlings. We need to whole, we need the whole class, the whole town to help. And that's how lights out for loggerheads began. Our classroom began the began, became the loggerhead lab. First, we gathered lots of information. We read books, we visited an aquarium and a sea turtle hospital. We asked someone from the South Carolina Marine Turtle Conservation Program to speak to our class. We all brainstormed solutions, choosing the best ideas. Then we got to work. We made posters and delivered them all over town. We wrote fact sheets for all the vacation beach houses. To pay for printing our flyers and posters, we held a bake sale. Andy the coffee shop man donated a whole pan of his fav famous granola. Happy to help. The editor promised to put my article in the community newspaper. Nice to have a new writer in town, she said. The printer gave us a discount for the loggerheads. Rebecca and Max learned how to spread the word on the internet. Mr. J helped us write a press release. I was on TV as class spokesperson. 
We invited volunteers from Scoop, South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiasts, to a town meeting. When the big night arrived, the room was packed. The room buzzed with ideas. We talked about how to make our beach a great place for turtles, how to mark nests, run nightly patrols, and what to do if hatchlings get in trouble. At the end, we decided to form our own volunteer group. People cheered for our class. Mr. J beamed, I'm proud of you all. That was the best night ever. Until, on the last evening of summer school, we went on a turtle patrol. Lots of parents came too. Everyone smiled as we watched the lights along the beach go out, one by one. We had done it. Suddenly, a movement on the sand caught my eye. Over here, I whispered. We crept closer, careful to stay quiet. A crescent moon showed up, shone above the waves. The sea glittered like silver. I made out first one, then two hatchlings. Soon the sand seemed to boil over with life. Tiny turtles, more than two inches long, burst from the nest. We watched, barely daring to breathe. Would they know where to go? Then they were off, scurrying, scurrying over the sand and into the shimmering sea. We stood together, smiling with wonder. Then just like sea turtles, we followed the moon home. I hope you enjoyed me reading Follow the Moon Home. Please click like if you did. It helps me to know what books are doing well or you'd like to see more of since videos geared for kids can't receive comments anymore. If you're a subscriber, thank you. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to check out all of my books read over the past two years. The best way to find out when I'm streaming or new books are posted is to click subscribe. If you're on social media, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Maggie Grace TV. Join me tomorrow at a, for another Maggie Reads Live at 4 p.m. Eastern. From my family to yours, stay safe and healthy, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Bye for now.